Here in Oregon and Washington, there's a, a mountain that really plays a big deal in our history. It wasn't that long ago, only 1980, but Mount St. Helens really has changed things here for the Pacific Northwest. In fact, if you ask anyone that lived here, let's say in 1980 or before, where they were when Mount St. Helens erupted, they can tell you exactly what was happening and where they were. It was a huge deal. And it changed the entire landscape and has changed a lot of things we know about volcanoes. You see, Mount St. Helens is a really important event. In this video, we're going to explore Mount St. Helens and the types of eruptions that come are like Mount St. Helens and the volcanoes that come. In particular, we're going to be looking at four different things. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to identify the effects of silica in magma. What happens to them? We're going to then define what is an explosive volcanic eruption, and you can compare that to the other videos about non-explosive volcanic eruptions. We're going to identify then some of the key characteristics of composite volcanoes, the type of volcanoes that have explosive eruptions. And then we're going to define what's an active, dormant, extinct volcano. We're going to look at those three terms. But let's go back to Mount Hood, Mount St. Helens, excuse me, Mount St. Helens. Now, let's go back in time a little bit to 1980 and leading up to it. You know, for many, many months and a year before, uh, there were small earthquakes on Mount St. Helens. And that showed geologists and seismologists that magma was moving into the mountain. You know, that's a really big deal. When we look at what a volcanic eruption is, it's magma reaching the surface. So before a volcanic eruption, we can see little tiny earthquakes. So these earthquakes were showing geologists that and volcanologists, that magma was moving. In fact, as the earthquakes continued throughout 1980 and up in the spring of 1980, a bulge on the side of Mount St. Helens started to grow. It was right above the magma chamber, and the mountain was swelling with so much magma moving in, getting larger. Now, at this time, people were warned to get out, and most people did because they knew something was happening. But as this bulge started to grow, the earthquakes became larger. On the morning of May 18, 1980, a large earthquake occurred at the base of the bulge. That earthquake caused the bulge to give way and to a landslide to occur. And the landslide revealed the magma chamber and all that magma that was there. But instead of the magma oozing and flowing out like in a non-explosive eruption, it exploded sending ash and rock and pumice flying in the air, a pyroclastic flow running down the mountain and a lahar behind it. But all that destruction, all that explosion, in one little ex seconds. But why didn't the magma just flow out? Why did it explode? What made that magma different than the magma we might see in Hawaii or in the mid-ocean ridges? What was different? Well, that question actually comes back to what we talked about in igneous rock. You see, the magma in Mount St. Helens and really any of the volcanoes here in the uh, central, I'm sorry, in the Cascades, contains silica, meaning they're felsic. And silica is a really interesting mineral. In fact, mineral-wise, it's quartz. It's extremely common. And felsic lava, quartz silica in it, makes magma sticky. So if you take it out, you have magmatic lava, and it flows and oozes and goes around. But if you keep it in, you get sticky lava. That's really important because sticky lava doesn't want to just flow around and move. It wants to stay together. It also traps water and different gases, CO2 and sulfur gas and sulfur, and sulfur inside the magma. So when that magma makes it to an eruption, it's kind of like having a soda that you shake up really good and give to a friend and poof, it goes all over them. So felsic lava always creates these explosive eruptions because it sticks to it. It sticks to each other and traps gases. And see, that's what happened at Mount St. Helens compared to Mauna Kea. The magma stuck to each other until finally, when it was released to the air by the landslide, it just exploded and the pressure gave way. So felsic lava leads to having these explosive eruptions. 
Now, felsic lava also builds a very type, very specific type of volcano. We're going to call those composite volcanoes. Now, in some textbooks on the internet, you might see them labeled as stratovolcanoes, and that's okay. It means the same thing, and you can use the same word. In my class, in my case, I use composite volcano because that's how I was taught, but you're more than welcome to use the other term. And these volcanoes are extremely steep and high, and it's kind of your classic mountain, especially here in the Pacific Northwest in Oregon. We see them all over the place. A great example would be Mount Hood. And they're built by felsic intrusive lava, so things that are like rhyolites and other rocks, scabros like that. And just like we said, this is magma that has trapped water and gases. Now there's a lot of classic examples, like I just said, Mount Hood or Mount St. Helens, Vesuvius, the mountain that leveled Pompeii and maybe created all the stone figures that you might have learned in social studies classes, Krakatoa, which created the loudest sound ever recorded, Mount Fuji, the mountain right outside of, uh, of Tokyo. But there is another one that I want to talk a little bit about that plays a really large role in Oregon's history. In fact, probably more a large role than Mount Hood. And isn't quite as well known as Mount Hood or Mount St. Helens. It's Mount Mazama. Now we're going to go back again, and we're going to go further back in time, way past 1980s, to about 5,600 years ago. Native Americans went are in Oregon. Not much else. Well, Mount Mazama, in this case, was a mountain that was in southern Oregon. And it was like all the other Cascade Mountains. It was fed by magma from subduction, the Juan de Fuca plates being pulled underneath the North American plate. And as it's being pulled, it melts and traps water and gases. And that magma moves up and created our Cascade Mountains here. Well, it moved up into Mount Mazama. The magma chamber at Mount Mazama was fairly large. And as that magma grew, the mountain became more and more uh, active and more eruptions. Well, eventually, though, enough magma reached up that just like a shaken soda that you might shake up really good and give your brother or sister and they open the cap, about 5,600 years ago, someone pulled the cork and Mount Mazama exploded. The explosion caused huge amounts of the mountain to just disappear into ash and pyroclastic bombs and other rocks that are flown out of the mountain. The other part, the magma chamber, collapsed and the caldera at the top of the mountain fell deep into the mountain and created this huge crater. Over time, that crater filled with water, and now we call that Crater Lake. At one point, it was an extremely active volcano, Mount Mazama, that erupted, and later on, it's now become a dormant or even extinct mountain. Now, if you notice when we talk about volcanoes like Mount Mazama or Crater Lake or even Mount Hood or Mount St. Helens, we use three words to describe them. Sometimes we call them active, or we might call them dormant or extinct. What does that exactly mean? And it tells us a lot about the mountain. Well, when Mount Mazama was erupting, we could say that Mount Mazama was active. An active volcano is either erupting or in the process or immediately going to erupt. It's going to happen really soon. Lucky, as I make this video and talk to you, there isn't any active volcanoes in the Pacific Northwest. Now, that could change at any moment, but right now, there, there's not. Dormant. Well, a dormant uh, volcano has magma in it. There is an active magma chamber. Magma has moved up into it. But there is no eruption that's going to happen immediately. It also means that an eruption has occurred within the past 10,000 years, which seems like a lot in time, and it is, but compared to the age of the Earth, that is nothing. Now, most of the mountains in Oregon and Washington are considered dormant. Mount Hood last erupted probably around 1798. It's considered dormant, meaning but they could reawaken at any time and erupt. Then finally, we have an extinct volcano. An extinct volcano means there's no magma. It's dead. And the last eruption was over 10,000 years ago. When it comes to the major mountains in the Cascades, really there's only one that's considered extinct, and that's Mount Jefferson. All the rest are pretty much considered dormant. Now, that doesn't mean, though, that it's dead. An extinct volcano is a magma chamber. Magma can move back up into it. So Mount Jefferson, could have magma move into it and become dormant or even active. 
but it's a way that we can describe where a volcano is at a certain time. And for a composite, they don't erupt all the time. And so it's easy for us to say how things are going to change all the time. Change from time to time. So what did we do in this video? Well, we did four things. We first, we looked at how silica and magma affects it. And we saw that Mount St. Helens is a great example. That silica is sticky and traps water and gases. And so when there is a volcanic eruption, it explodes out. And so silica causes explosive eruptions. We then saw that an explosive eruption is where magma reaches the surface and instead of oozing, it explodes. The gases are released, the pressure expands it out very quickly. And it's a lot like shaking up a soda and releasing the cap and it goes all over there. We saw that there are some key characteristics to a composite volcano where we would find these explosive eruptions, that they're really steep, they're kind of that classic volcano that you'd see in like Mount St. Helens, Mount Hood, um, and we had some great examples. And then we saw that these composite volcanoes can either be active if they're immediately going to erupt or are erupting, dormant if they still could erupt, they have magma and, and have erupted in the past 10,000 years, or extinct if they don't have magma and they're not going to erupt. Uh, or they haven't erupted in the past 10,000 years. So in conclusion, let me remind you how these videos work. If I'm going too fast, you can always hit pause and write it down, or go back and listen to a part again, or take a break and come back and watch the whole thing again to kind of refresh. But always remember to keep moving forward.